Okay, students. Next, let us look at what is called responsibility accounting. You know, responsibility center. How do you now measure the effectiveness of a responsibility center? Right? Responsibility accounting is the method of measuring the effectiveness of the center. Who is in charge of the responsibility center? Managers of the responsibility centers are responsible for these centers. So the manager's performance has to be evaluated. Responsibility reports show the performance achieved by various responsibility centers. Deviations from the budgeted performance should be reported at the earliest so that corrective action may be taken for the future. Clear? So responsibility accounting is nothing but how to measure the effectiveness of a responsibility center which is under the uh, charge of a, under the responsibility of a manager. So how to evaluate the performance which is achieved by the manager. So normally budgets are prepared and what is the deviation from the budgeted performance? This should be reported. Earliest you report, the earlier the corrective action can be taken. What is the responsibility accounting process there for students? So first you have to identify the responsibility center. What is the responsibility center? It should be separable. It should be in charge of, under the charge of a particular manager. Yes or no? We should be able, it should have separate uh, operating purpose. And performance measurement must be possible. Right? First decide on what is the responsibility center. Remember, don't forget, if you have responsibility center, they should be, that the managers of these centers should be allowed to, should be, should, should have the freedom, have the authority to take decisions regarding the factors which affect their performance. Yes or no? So, there is authority. Controllable and non-controllable costs. Remember, everything may not be, all the costs need not be under the control of that manager. There may be certain central costs which may be allocated to them. There may be certain costs which are incurred by the responsibility center, but, but, uh, sorry, are, are incurred for the responsibility center, but by the corporate management. Yes, I know, by the top management, by the central leadership, it's possible. So, the manager cannot be held responsible for those costs. So, we should separate the controllable and non-controllable costs. And of course, then what is the performance criteria? Normally, like we said, it would be standard costing, budgetary controller, profitability ratios. Yes or no? So, first identify the center, ensure there is delegation of authority, control the, uh, sorry, separate the controllable and non-controllable costs and establish performance evaluation criteria. Yes or no? How will you evaluate the performance? How will you decide whether the targets have been achieved or not? <clears throat> Guidelines for allocating costs. When we are allocating costs, students, obviously if the person has authority over the cost, over both the acquisition and the use of the service, he is charged with such costs. He decides on the supplier. He uses those, those services. Obviously, he will be responsible for the cost. If a person can significantly influence the amount of cost through his action, he should be charged with the cost. Okay. And third one, this is another one they use in order to overall, centrally, considering goal conquest, if you can bring down the cost, even if a manager cannot significantly influence the amount of cost, okay, he could be charged with the cost if the management feels that he can influence those who are responsible for such costs. Interesting, right? So these are certain guidelines for allocating the costs. Right? <clears throat> of course, this comes largely with respect to, some of these items come largely with respect to common costs. We will do allocation of common costs also. That is another subtopic. <clears throat> So what are the advantages of responsibility accounting? It is a control measure, right? You lay down criteria. A certain manager is accountable for a particular center, performance of a center. There is accountability. It provides for motivation. Responsibility accounting provides motivation. Helps in uh, performance evaluation. That's how it is also motivating, yes or no? And facilitates transfer pricing. Because divisions account for the cost, 
account for the revenues they are aware in case they sell their services or goods to another department within internally itself how much should they charge the department transfer pricing is something which we will do in detail but responsible for accounting also facilitates transfer pricing <coughs> Performance measurement and management manager motivation. Every SBU, do you remember students? Strategic business unit is structured such that it is under a single manager and measures are designed to evaluate and monitor performance. So it's not five people controlling one because then how, how do you measure the effectiveness of the manager? There's a single manager, then there are measures to evaluate and monitor the performance. Remember the factors, these factors, how are you going to monitor performance and what factors? Those factors should be under the control and influence of the manager, right? You are aware of this, I think. The performance measures should promote goal congruence. Do you understand goal congruence, students? What is goal congruence? When the manager tries to achieve his goals, works towards achieving his goals, it also helps in achieving the overall organizational objective. So the managerial goal, the goals of each manager is, is, is aligned in such a manner, is structured in such a manner, they work towards the achievement of the organizational goals. There cannot be conflict here. Yes or no, the performance measures should promote goal confidence. And of course, if manager incentive is based on performance, they should have security to control the factors which affect the performance, which has already been discussed here. Yes or no? Here should be under one manager. There are measures. They should be able to control those measures, monitor those measures, and of course the measures should be such that they promote, promote goal congruence. Prerequisites. What are the prerequisites of responsibility accounting? You should have a proper organizational structure where divisions are identified as responsibility centers. Yes or no? Centers should be separable and performance evaluation possible. Correct? So you must have a structure. The center should be separately identifiable. Performance evaluation should be possible. There should be proper proper delegation of work and responsibility. So the structure should be very sound. The divisions are marked clearly. Authority, responsibility is marked separately. And very important that you have a system of reporting so that performances can be evaluated. If these conditions are absent, it is difficult to have a responsibility accounting system. Have a good structure, organizational structure, clearly defined. Keep the center separate. Performance evaluation should be possible. And there should be a system of reporting. Otherwise, how will you have performance evaluation? Proper delegation of work and responsibility.